Have you ever wondered if AI can create 3D models from a single image? Well, I tested this new tool and I'll be sharing what I found. Chat, we got Sora AI for 3D before GTA 6. And I hate to admit it, but it's actually terrific. A little while ago, a company named Demos Tech reached out to me with a collaboration offer to promote their generative AI model called Rodin Gen 1. I get a lot of emails from AI startups, but this is the first time they've actually piqued my interest with their claims, so I decided to give it a shot. The generative AI model used for Rodin AI is called Clay. It is trained on over a billion 3D models and close to a billion textures, allowing it to create advanced 3D models from even a single image with PBR materials. A fraction of these models are sourced from libraries like Objiverse XL, ShapeNet, and 3D Front. And they also claim to have proprietary scanning equipment and in-house artists to build such a massive library for the AI to train on. Moreover, they also leverage other models like GPT-4V to analyze and annotate geometric characteristics and important features of their 3D models and enabling tech to 3D features. Now I can't go over everything in this video but they have a whole paper on their model that you can find in the description below if you're interested in reading and learning more. This is what their website looks like. You can give your input here and also check out how other people are using it. It all looks ridiculously well made for an AI. It works on a credit system so you can buy credits directly or opt in for a subscription and save a lot of money. You can also follow the link in the description for 50% bonus credits for free. Let's try giving it a text prompt first. I'm just gonna type in Miles Morales and generate a dynamic pose. After a while, you'll see the 3D object on the left and your controls on the right. Look how good of a job it has managed to do with just a single image, which was also AI generated. I was skeptical at first, but when I saw how accurately it created the backside of the character from just one angle, I was immediately impressed. You can refine the output by editing the description text box or using checkboxes for specific features like symmetry, edge type, and complexity. This gear icon will give you advanced options such as specifying the seed, changing the mode where recon will try to match the pose in the image as closely as possible while rest will force the character into a t-pose while maintaining as many details as possible the higher the cfg value the more closely it will follow your set criteria and steps mean more processing time but setting it to higher values usually gives you a better result using the negative prompt you can specify if you want something removed during the generation process if you're happy with the output, set the target poly count and you can also enable hyper for delicate elements before confirming. It will then give us a retopologized version like this and you can switch the view to the wireframe mode and see just how cleanly quads this is all over. Of course, since this is all automatic, the edge flow isn't going to be perfect. But for props, background assets or even using it as a placeholder or base model to model on top of it is going to be a solid workflow. After you have this model, you can head to the mesh editor window to make manual changes and this is such a nice feature to have. Middle mouse button to pan, scroll to zoom, and right click to rotate. You'll find different kinds of sculpting brushes here to draw, grab, flatten, etc. which you can use to manipulate your model right inside your browser. After you're done, just press confirm and it'll update the model. Next is material generation. You can use the original image or add other images just for the material generation. Adjust the PBR temperature and reference strength for complexity and similarity to the reference image. After generating, switch shading modes to inspect textures, refine them and confirm. Then in the pack section, you can choose if you want the base model without the mesh editor alterations or if you want the high poly model with the changes. You can also hit this LOD checkbox which will generate LODs automatically for you but then you can only download in the FBX format. For the material, I will go with PBR and 4K so that I can get all the texture maps in the highest quality and I can use to shade my character however I want in Blender later. Speaking of which, I tried importing it into Blender, slapped on a wallpaper from across the Spider-Verse in the background and came up with this render. Like this totally works and this is just like 5 minutes of work. Imagine what you could do if you actually plan and incorporate this tool into your pipeline. Like let's just say you want to build an isometric interior scene, you can just have Rodin AI generate the couch, a cool table and whatnot and focus on the fun stuff like creating good layouts and decor. Or if you're having a hard time figuring out the base shape of an object you see in an image, you can feed it into this AI, generate a block out and use it as a starting point. Or even create props and action figures and other decors to populate your scene. When you feed in multiple images into it and hit generate, you get two options. With the multi-view option, you can provide different angles of the same object which will help the AI to get more context regarding the shape of the object and it will provide you with more accurate results. With the fusion option, you can provide images 
images of completely different objects and it'll create a mix between them. So I can have a banana and a Glock, cause why not? And it'll give me a mixture of the two. And if we click here, we get a slider that we can use to give one of the images more weight and hit redo to get a different result. Now this is the part where I ask you to subscribe to the channel or I will turn you into a fusion with Joe Biden. Let's try to see how we can go about using it practically. I want to create a wall shelf render like this with a cool design and the shelves filled with books, plants, figurines and whatnot. I generated this main model of the shelf using a text prompt and the accessories for it using text prompts, images with multi view and also fusion. Some models looked weird when they were first generated but playing around with the prompt and the advanced settings and redoing really helped me get what I wanted. Some of them needed a bit of cleanup as well and if it was simple enough I just did it in the inbuilt mesh editor window but for anything slightly advanced I just quickly did it inside blender after importing the fbx file. The clean quad topology makes this pretty easy too. After setting up some basic materials and lighting and decorating the shelves with all the generated models this is what I had. Nothing here was made from scratch and this was really to show you how you can practically make use of this tool in your projects. Now for the real question. Will this AI replace 3D modeling? I'm gonna say no. While generative AI is growing at a terrifying rate, in my opinion, it's similar to when the internet first came out and people thought their jobs would be taken. Sure, lots of jobs were taken, but the ones who taught themselves this new thing and leveraged it to work for them were the ones who succeeded. So don't be scared of any new tool that comes out, just try to understand it and see how you can make the best use of it. Just like the internet has right and wrong uses, AI does too and this will all iron out and we'll all have our own little moral compasses in our minds for what's the good use of it. This is really just the beginning with Road in AI and I'm excited to see where it goes. I'll I'll surely be using it in my projects and if you see the potential too, check the link in the description for bonus credits and start creating today.